It's a wretched cesspool of vice and immorality. And it's rather fun. The squirrel's tail twitched in a salute between equals. Saluna, Our Lady of Silver. Saluna, the Moon Maiden. He gave a tiny burble of disappointment, head falling towards the ground. She doesn't have to be trustworthy to be useful. He lowed with surprise and delight, clearly unused to this attention from strangers. Leviata. Of course. A goddess who thrives on pain and torture. With that, she fluttered into the air, setting off at a determined pace. We should check it out, but be careful. The dog looked from me to his late master. I felt hope, but also lingering sadness. He listened closely, excited and bewildered in equal measure. My chest filled with yearning. I wanted to get closer to... No. This was all wrong. His eyes flicked to mine for an instant, then away as if it hurt to look at me. So this is what honesty gets you. Consider my lesson learned. A wicked looking knife. Why hide it here? My words fell on deaf ears as the two men stared each other down. I saw a name etched into the leather. Scratch. The rat hissed as I locked eyes with it, an ugly grimace on its face. It was no masterpiece. Her gaze flicked between the box and me. She was lying. Either way, we're in a cell. Not a grave. Let's find a way out of here. Freshly turned soil shifted beneath my feet as I approached the grave. Whatever made those tracks seems to be in here. The bird hopped impatiently. My chest filled with yearning. I wanted to get closer. I needed to get closer. She tilted her head curiously. She didn't seem to know it. The wolf focused on the gentle movement of the pool, shutting out the commotion of the grove. The boar squealed in outrage and shuffled its trotters, ready to flee. Or charge. Are they all like this? A low growl built in his throat as his eyes tracked the movement of my tail. It was agitating him. With a flick of his tail, he ran away, urging me to follow him. I saw a name etched into the leather. Scratch. Compassion. Our Lady of Slathering Lunacy, more like. It looked like quite a battle. And yet the monsters had returned. Were they heading to the Druid's Grove? He responded to my greeting with a sad snort and shake of the head. He wanted to leave this blood-soaked place. I'm not in the habit of helping vermin. Hopefully it won't return to bite. The bird hesitated a second, then let out a tentative chirp. He hopped around happily. What? What happened? I saw the slaughter of the tieflings again, but through her eyes. The delight of blood, the symphony of screams, my lips set in a cruel smile. He nodded, grateful of that at least. Strange times, strange bedfellows. Not a pleasant thought, but our reality nonetheless. I saw him descending into the hatch, surrounded by safe, comfortable darkness. Several spiders rested in the rear of the crevice. There's no forging without fire. His eyes settled on the stone door as he whined softly. I let my hand fall. Victory was mine. Necklace matches the sigil in that cave. The harpers were busy. Tail rigid with irritation. She scampered off. He flinched and scurried away. Typical. Agitated clacking choked my thoughts. The spiders skittered about more nervous than before. The bear's heart sank. He turned away, his mind drifting to the memory of a particularly tasty fish. She chittered back energetically. I had no idea what any of it meant. I stumbled. In one swift move, the armoured man's fist made contact with a sickening crunch. Allying ourselves with dark forces? Really, you lot? I might weep with pride. So many dead, but no signs of a struggle. What happened here? Poor creature. I hope it can follow my scent to camp. Yikes. Don't disturb a half-ogre in the making. I could see the broken helmet bore the mark of Shah, the Dark Lady. I slipped my hand into his pocket, but came up empty. If he'd had any gold at all, someone else had run off with it. Beasts chasing beasts, alongside a wild woman. The scene meant nothing to me. Such a rush to tell everyone our business. The tiefling prayed to my patron, Kellen Vor. Instantly, I knew what was in his heart. There was nothing else to do here. I took my leave. So much for honesty. Our healer turned into a jailer pretty quickly once she heard about the tadpole. Now that's... dedication? 
As I turned to leave, so did the other child nearby. She looked nervous for some reason. My skull pounded in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips didn't move, yet I heard her voice. For the best. Death is too good for it. It didn't seem worth much, but she held it as if it was a great treasure. What a hero. The music wove together. With a sigh, the bard closed her eyes. This was the child that had vanished right in front of me before. The towers seized, the battle done, the moonrise broke the darkest one. I felt I'd been robbed. And by the look of my pack, not for the first time, the bear was preoccupied with a shiny pebble. My presence went unnoticed. The squirrel chittered scornfully as my foot whistled over her head. He licked blood and dirt from his paws, acknowledging my presence with a low growl. And yet another. Hardly the warmest of welcomes. It gave a final anxious snort, then bolted away. One by one, the spiders retreated to the rear of the crevice, lulled by my crooning. Saluna, mother of tides. Saluna, our lady of silver. I shook my head and left. The tadpole squirmed with glee. It was clearing the way for something deep inside. Something that wasn't me. Here lies Cannon. He gave his life defending others. He will be missed. Fragile silence. I heard nothing. I saw nothing. Nothing. The dog raked the ground with his paw. The name Scratch came to me. The bird hopped around the nest excitedly, grateful that it was still intact. I hear shouting and screaming. Shrieking with indignant terror, the squirrel fled. I felt a deep need for comfort swell in the dog. He nuzzled my hand and urged me on. Looks like a beast came through here. A big one, too. The bear lazily opened her eyes and nodded in gratitude. The ox's hooves stamped the ground, longing to trample any goblin in sight. The bear's heart leapt. Was that a look of recognition on the man's face? I live by two rules. Always empty your flask and never trust goblins. A deathly cold aura settled around the grave, seeping into the soil. I found a cold, sick lump of fear in the dog as the memory arose. I dug through the rock pile but found no trace of the boy. I'll need a flame hot enough for forging. Chittering, he opened his mouth. One of his teeth was badly chipped. And if the darkest one was Shah, Moonrise must be her wretched sister, Saloon. I balked at the thought of her breaking my goddess. I stashed the bag. Something clinked among the coins. I wasn't sure what to make of it. A deep, sad whine escaped from the dog. He bowed his head, almost like an acceptance. Time to get this thing fired up. I stumbled. The tiefling landed a glancing blow across the man's temple. No more prayers. Only silence and dust. I tried to imagine the purpose of such a creature. Distracted by my thoughts, I let my guard down. I realized he prayed to Kelimvor as he expected to soon perish and face the Lord of Death's judgment. In darkest hour, a concord made twixt harp and wild against the shade. I saw his mother lifting the amulet out of an ornate drawer and stuffing it into her apron. Those two must have history. Our minds fused, lusting for something that was gone. I approached the dying monster. This was the thing that had abducted me. The flames sputtered away. The bow was mine for the taking. Oh, hells! Something just woke up. The ox snorted. She knew how to handle danger. The wolf bared his teeth. He only took orders from his master, and his master wasn't here. The bear filled with curiosity. Where had the colorful man come from? It's lovely. My skull ached before I could take a step. And I was the creature. I felt her irritation and indignity. The poor creature was on the brink of death. But there was still time. As one, they looked at the bard strumming her lute and winced. The body was still. She stared at the ground as I greeted her, unresponsive. I felt the ox's excitement. She was ready for the road beneath her hooves, the wind on her back. A splinter of ice worked its way into my mind. That, or we've just prolonged its misery. This crevice was empty save a bit of dust. Gaining confidence, he started a song, abandoning his nest-building efforts. Around the dog's neck was a collar. Etched on it was the name Scratch. In one swift move, the armoured man's fist made contact with a sickening crunch. My skull pounded in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. 
Her lips didn't move. Yet I heard her voice. Another! A mere hatchling could do finer work. The bird hopped around, scanning sticks and flowers, looking for a nice addition to his nest. What a hero. My words fell on deaf ears as the two men stared each other down. As the horn sounded, howls and guttural war cries responded from the edge of the forest. The animals around us fell silent. He turned and yapped at the corpse, as if to try and wake it. Gluttony? The rat's ears twitched in interest. The creatures clutched the pouch possessively. I had no doubt a spider egg was nestled within. The water looked calm. I could lie down and rest. A primitive tool. It's useful, nonetheless. <laughs> a waste of stonework. A monument to a charlatan. As the coin disappeared into the well, I heard a soft clink. Not a splash. That tomb. Must be who this crypt is for. Well, after you. I couldn't make sense of what he was saying. The fight had rattled the bear. She wheezed, exhausted, swaying from side to side. Good work. Thought we had a fight on our hands. The dog's hackles raised as its growls loudened. The stone's less worn here. Recently uncovered, the captive's mouth was still. Yet her voice was clear. Her eyes widened at my tail as she listened intently. I didn't spot anything out of the ordinary. It fits! Oh, hells. I'll bear eggshells. An unhatched one would fetch quite a price. Through her eyes, I saw the other tieflings. What little of value they had, and where they kept it safe. She and her druid allies bloodied Shah's forces, but Shah persists. She thrives. Leviathar? Sounds like a violent goddess. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the child move through the rocks. It smells like burnt flesh in here. Broken. Pitiful. The bird and squirrel twitched, and I felt their unease. Here lies Aradin. He yearned for glory and adventure. And he got it. Calm yourself. They're survivors, not soldiers. The boar stared longingly at the pool, yearning for its soothing waters. Ugh! The smells. Did those harpies really live here? The spiders scattered. I felt their panic. The beloved was taken. I can't fit through here. I wonder if there's another way in. It didn't respond. The spell's magic was spent. Her hands hid her face, preventing me from reading her expression. Contact. He fell to the ground unconscious. Ah, yes, goblins. Known for their reliability, honour and excellent body odour. I missed. Chittering, the squirrel fled. It sounded like laughter. Damn nuts! She squeaked a final warning. Break the rules and there will be trouble and scurried away. The rat sniffed the chest, then leapt in, tail twitching gratefully. This trunk's rotten. Shouldn't put too much weight on it. Despite the chaos in the camp, the adventurer slept soundly, wounds expertly bandaged. Nice view. The rat snapped, squeaking, and carried on its way. The bird sang as loud as his lungs would allow, practicing fervently. He snarled a warning of his own flattening his ears and lowering his body, ready to pounce. The infuriated spiders crossed my hand and scaled my arm. The swarm was coming. The inscription spoke of Moonrise. A reference to Vile Saloon, no doubt. Before I could say anything else, she sprinted away. I sensed the bear's curiosity as it looked me over. Another stranger. Where had I come from? Her ears wriggled thoughtfully as she considered my offer. Well, whatever you're into. <laughs> An altar to the moon goddess Saluna. I can still feel her presence. Monster. Death is too good for it. Won't budge. I don't see how a creature like that could be of any use to us. Something caught the light in the water. Weapons. Shattered, but not beyond repair. For once. The rat paused for a moment, then squeaked loudly. It skittered away, stopped, and looked back. I felt animal instinct seize the dog's mind. He lunged to defend himself. And his master. Harp and wild? A riddle to some. But I'd read enough to be familiar with language like this. That tail bristled as her gaze fixed upon my feet. I was in her territory. It's done now. We don't have the luxury of second thoughts. I bet this contraption has something to do with it. The tower seized the battle done. The moonrise broke the darkest one. Though the dog's aggression had ebbed away, I still felt his unwavering resolve. That could have been worse. I stashed the bag in my pack, 
Something clinked among the coins. The infuriated spiders crossed my hand and scaled my arm. The swarm was coming. I need to get out of here. And fast. The boar pranced around, haunches clenching and unclenching impatiently. The dog remained at the dead man's side. As if in mourning. Too many predators lately. Even for a bear. His eyes didn't open, but his lips parted with a rasping wheeze. I think I feel a breeze. The rat hesitated just a moment before scurrying over to me. Your world has strange customs. I'd have given my life to save it, nurse it back to health. We'll need a cover story. It would be a joy to serve it. Dying an honour. I saw gnolls and goblins prowling the woods. A man crying over a heap of fur. Smiling, the girl opened her pack. The tiefling landed a glancing blow across the man's temple. It was for the best. The cup would have died anyway. For once, she was happy to be bothered. Stars and the full moon. Saluna's symbols. The rat sniffed at me, then waddled away. I'd been robbed. My fingers clanged loudly against the strings. The bard winced. I'll throw in with Asmodeus himself if it fixes our little wriggler problem. Harpers and druids working together. A formidable force. Ugh. What's that? Rotting flesh. The flakes squelched the fires. The sword was unchanged. Don't group me in with the likes of them. So many dead, but no signs of a struggle. Well, well. What have we here? By waters still, neath watching trees, a hallowed place for Mother Peace. Nature can provide for the cub. Perhaps it will live. The dog's eyes met mine again. He would join me later, after he'd said goodbye. You're more cunning than you look. I thought we had a fight on our hands. It was possible I'd just claimed the squirrel's territory by right of conquest. I never did find out why the squirrel attacked me, but I had clearly won this fight. She studied me for a moment before twitching her ears. Compromise? The flakes squelched the fires. The bow was unchanged as I approached. A guttural scream and a succession of quick bangs rattled the door. She hears of the tadpole and thinks we can be bound. He was staring past me again. As if I wasn't there. A stone rune. Long forgotten by the looks of it. He smelled of sweat and a dusty road long travelled. And yes, cow dung. That stench. Dead owlbear prey, no doubt. I reckon I should start a fire. He sniffed the air as I approached, then let out a huff, disappointed. I realised he was waiting for a mate. The dog considered me with lingering wariness. The bird only hopped aside, picking up my foot, and then went back to worrying over his nest. Pincers pierced my flesh, and pain shot up my arm and across my back. If this was true, Moonrise must be a reference to Shah's divine sister, Saloon. Phew! It's broken. The roaring furnace awaited an offering. The armoured man twitched. He was about to erupt. I could hear the gentle scratch of something against the pod lid. I recognised the druids, or their garb at least. Elders of a druid circle. This was once a sacred place to my people. A divine sanctuary. The bear licked her lips, still grateful for the snack. The tadpole writhed in ecstasy. Finally, the way was clear. It was coming. It was coming. I can't forge a weapon without starting a fire. Heretical nonsense. Best left to crumble to ruins. The ox swayed his head back and forth, looking for new things to smell. We must be desperate indeed to throw in with her. Dry stones lined the wall. At the bottom, something gleamed in the dappled light. The tablets in the same style as those glowing runes. Sounds like they've captured themselves a bard. A victory of the celestial saloon over her dark sister, Shah. This would be perfect if I had Sousa Bark. But I don't. So it isn't. She chattered back, louder and at length. The child continued staring past me. The tadpole thrashed violently in my brain. My blood hummed. I was changing. Another broken trap? Who made these things? The ox chewed and stared with disinterest. She flashed the hand signal Mole had taught me and turned away. My breath caught in my throat. The broken helmet bore the mark of my goddess, Shah, the Lady of Loss. No more prayers. Only dust and silence. The coin disappeared into the darkness, landing with a soft clink. Stars and the full moon. Saluna's symbols. They're all over the temple.
Is someone singing? It's ready to go. Time to get to work. He evaluated his collection and made a happy jump. He chirped his thanks, leaving the coin aside. At the back of the crevice lay a bag covered with spiders. A shiny gold coin poked from its mouth. She spun in short arcs, indicating which of the trees were hers and to be left alone. I watched the squirrel closely and shifted my foot an inch to the left. But then its grip clawed back with a vengeance, a vice locking my mind into obedience. Music to Githyanki ears. I watched the squirrel closely for a moment, but her motivations eluded me. I sensed the dog's aggression subside a little. He sniffed the air uncertainly. A tidy slot, but no rune. He recoiled. Was I a monster too? What beautiful music. With a desperate squeal, the boar dashed past me before I could strike. It would have been quicker to kill them. My skull pounded in response to the prisoner's white, hot stare. Her lips didn't move, yet I heard her voice. The corpse's head lolled back as the magic faded. The spell was done. Warm, wet tentacles wrapped themselves around my head. And for the first time in my life, the forest rose with claw and tooth to tear the darkness from its roots. The monster's tentacles twitched weakly. It wouldn't last much longer. Useless. Disturbing, you mean? Looks like that's gonna bruise. I can't even see a lock to pick. The spell elicited a gasp, a weak echo of life. Wait! This looks familiar. Apart from the overgrowth of moss, the well looked unremarkable. I'd been robbed again. The bear's nose twitched nervously. Familiar sense. But no trace of Halsin. Dead goblins. Dead travellers. The lute twanged, and the tieflings stopped singing. Saluna, the night white lady. There's something underneath here. The spiders skittered about more nervous than before. Just then. I noticed my bags felt lighter than before. The bear's nostrils quivered as it took in the aftermath of the battle. It growled, soft and sad. This also missed. No trigger or handle, though. No way to open it. A lone cub isn't much of a threat. A war drum. One of those can summon fighters far and wide. The fallen bore Shah's sacred symbol on their armor and banners. The bird sat back in satisfaction, admiring its nest. The creatures clutched the pouch possessively. Was gold so precious to spiders? What? What was that? Go on. If she turns sour, we'll give her the slip. And I felt answers. She knew more about my condition. This should burn going down. What kind of contraption is this? The fresco showed a powerful group of druids gathered in Eldath's name. I was on sacred ground. The mural showed druid and beast fighting together to drive monsters from their land. Here lies Zevlor. He saved us when all hope seemed lost. Thank you, friend. The rat gestured angrily towards the chest, chittering angrily. It bit down on nothing but winced all the same. The dog tilted his head and whined softly. The wolf's fur bristled. He wanted to jump, wanted to bite. My heart sank. Two days. I wasn't sure if I had two hours. I needed a healer now, or who knows what the worm in my brain would do. Hideous trinket, lacking in function or taste. In darkest hour, a concord made twixt harp and wild against the shade. No lock, no handle. How does it open? I was left with memories. Not mine, but Will's. First, a bloodbath. Then, a promise. Ugh. What is that stench? No, this isn't right. A song began to form as our music wove together. The bard closed her eyes. Saluna, she who guides. His ears twitched as I spoke, but his eyes didn't shift from my tail. He saw me as a threat. The tap pot quivered. It seemed to be burrowing deeper in my mind, feasting on... on... what? The word escaped me. The bird's feathers ruffled impatiently. She had places to be. Plunder. From Shah's temple, if that diary's right. The pillar can't hold it. Too badly damaged. As I neared the end of my tail, I felt his excitement turn to fear. Monstrous creatures. My voice drew their attention. They were suspicious, then curious, and finally, at rest. I saw him holding me by the throat. I saw him taking the amulet off my corpse. The goblin slunk backwards. 
afraid to take their eyes off me. It was unnecessarily odd. A small, noisy pest with a bushy tail. I saw her hand in my bags. And the shame in her heart. Goblins ahead! I could see nothing in the darkness. The child stared past me as if I wasn't there. I felt the dog's resolve deepen. He wanted me to leave him and his master alone. I noticed something wrong with its mouth. The creature hissed at me, revealing a badly chipped tooth. Broken. Shoddy work. Yes, I felt hate. And I deserved to be punished for it. The tadpole. It was doing something. Taking something I'd never get back. With a thunk, the armoured man collapsed. Unconscious. It feels like something's weighing it down. But he didn't. Scratch had to come back, finding him here. A splinter of ice worked its way into my mind. I heard the drow's voice, as if she were by my side. His eyes locked onto mine, his lips curled back, dripping saliva. The bird chirped happily and skipped a little. She seemed to be remembering someone she was very fond of. Wherever they were, the dog tilted his head and whined softly in recognition. It seemed whatever had caused the damage was in there. His dark eyes stared at me, waiting for this danger to be banished. But he didn't. The dog had to come back, finding him here. Find the aged wine? Don't mind if I do. An altar to Saluna. I still feel the moon goddess's presence here. For a brief moment, all I felt was heavy silence. It wasn't uncommon for my brethren to fight dark forces in our lands. But this looked like something different. The fresco showed some druids blessing a damp cave. A weak ritual for a weak goddess. At least the cub has a fighting chance now. Yes, it's a good thing we were here. We have made an ally of an enemy. Quite judicious. I felt the dog's heart give a flutter as he recognised his name. He whined softly, torn. Hmm. Still missing the suitor bark. My skull ached before I could take a step. And I was the creature. I saw the tieflings through the bars of her cage. I felt her irritation and indignity. A quiet peace settled in my heart. She froze, her muscles tensed with alarm. Realization dawned. He was describing how to open something. A door? The bird chirped his disagreement and resolutely pushed the coin to the right. That was not what I expected to see today. Darkest one? Moonrise? They meant nothing to me. A sweet melody played above the waves, beckoning. When I turned back, he was gone, again. Then she plopped her head back down, already dreaming of a quiet home and glorious sleep. The flakes squelched the fires. The dagger was unchanged. Odd necklace. Might sell for a few coppers. People up ahead. One looks injured. A single ear twitch was the bear's only acknowledgement of me. She needed her sleep. Her eyes widened at my tail as she listened intently. The scene showed druids blessing the grove for Mother Peace, a term for the blessed goddess Eldath. There's still life left in this old thing. It should be hot enough. Time to put this forge to work. Perhaps I can still wring something useful from this old forge. The dog whimpered and nuzzled my hand as if to urge me on. Loyalty for the man who laid nearby. Then a wheeze of concern. He sensed something in me, or rather, something I carried. For someone who just heard we're all beasties in waiting, she reacted well. The squirrel lunged at my foot and bit it. The druids must have turned to the harpers for help, unusual for such a territorial group. My fingers searched but found no bag. Had it been a trick of the light? The corpse awaited my questions. I followed the squirrel's gaze to a pair of clumsy, ugly feet. My own on her territory. The boar stared with beady, panicked eyes. Then it bolted off. He looked over at the stone door and trampled impatiently. His master had promised a companion. I lurched forward into a body trapped in darkness, the sides of the pod closing around me. I can't work without a blueprint. The rat hissed and scurried away. After you. Her eyes went wide. She nodded nervously and turned away. Harp and wild. I recalled stories of an alliance between druids and the harpers. Could this have been it? The bear's nose twitched. She was up and gulping down the fish in an instant. I felt this was a purge unlike any I'd ever seen. A sacred cleansing of the land. It's beautiful. This necklace's sigil was also in the cave. 
the Harpers have been unusually active here. I'll be there soon, my lady. That song. The forest rose with claw and tooth to tear the darkness from its roots. No, it was nothing. The bear let out a disappointed huff. One by one, the spiders retreated to the rear of the crevice, lulled by my murmurs. His ears twitched as he lowered his head, inviting me to pet him. Releasing a feral little goblin into the wild? What could go wrong? A sigil of the harpers. Odd for their kind to misplace this. Tight fit. I won't be getting back in that way. The bird hesitated for a second, then pushed the coin away. Did we just place our faith in a goblin? This thing must be warping our minds already. Stay out of my head. You could feed an army with an egg that size, if you found an intact one. Free. For now. The flames sputtered away. The dagger was mine for the taking. Broken. Must have been here a while. The druids drove monsters from this land once but their power had long since waned. With a scornful flick of her tail, the squirrel scampered away. The bird hopped about a small pile of trinkets, pushing a coin around, assessing the best placement for it. A heavy silence settled in my heart as I stared at the grave. It's loose. One good push away from tumbling. The boar strutted proudly, head held high. He was glad to be alive. The well didn't look too deep, and the old bucket rope felt strong enough. The foul-tempered rodent hissed at me and scurried away. The squirrel chittered angrily at me again before flouncing away. The bird fluttered about frantically, looking for his missing treasure. The symbols on those plates are all over the temple. Pincers pierced my flesh. Their chitters became giggles. The intruder was punished. Nature might have provided for it. Too late now. The boar basked in the pool relishing the calming effects of the water. The bear's concern washed over me. Where was Halston? Why wasn't he back yet? His eyes darted back and forth, tracking every movement. There were too many strangers here. The bear lazily lifted her head and sniffed the air, then promptly went back to sleep. Indeed. Isn't it delightful? All fired up and ready to go. I noticed she was trembling. The tears streaming down her cheeks were indeed real. I'm no metalsmith. But I believe I need some fire. The dog growled at me. Beneath the aggression, I felt a deep protectiveness and loyalty. Tight fit? I barely got through. The squirrel looked up at me, eyes wide, heart thundering. Never mind their history. Let's see if they have a healer. She ruffled her feathers and chirped harshly, mimicking a goblin's cry. Good call. Looks like that's going to bruise. It needed sustenance to survive. And with my very body, I could provide. More owlbear eggs. Already hatched. No point in taking these. His eyes rolled, an instinct drove him to rear away. An illness? No, a parasite. Let the goblins kill them. At least they'll enjoy it. Ugh, pathetic. His growl was low, a warning to leave him be. As I drained the bottle, a comforting warmth enveloped me like an old, much-loved blanket. When I turned back, the child had vanished. His lips closed. The body was still. The spell was done. The ox's nostrils flared. She could almost smell the fresh grass. For the best. The gake earned its fate. I sensed the bear's growing frustration. How could he make the strange man understand? The goblin's nostrils flared as if trying to judge my intent through smell alone. The dog's hackles raised as its growls loudened. The tiefling twitched. He was about to erupt. The wolf's fur ruffled in annoyance. He wanted me to leave. There were too many people here. That's putting it mildly. The ox stared at me wearily, before dipping its head to munch on some dry grass. The corpse's mouth wrenched into a hateful twist. It refused to speak. He breathed deep seeming to relish in the new scents I brought with me. The dog looked from its owner with a soft whine. He did not move from the corpse. I've everything I need, except fire. The girl winked at me and turned away. Contact. He fell to the ground unconscious. I felt a hole open in the dog's heart, an absence it could barely comprehend. The rat chittered at the chest, wincing with its broken tooth. Auntie Ethel nodded along to my tail. Her face creased with concern. Seems like nature's provided a shortcut. I felt movement behind me and turned. But the new moon represents Shah. 
Not sure about the red light. The corpse had nothing more to say to me. The girl winked at me as I turned away. At least it won't suffer anymore. The bird chirped his disagreement and resolutely pushed the coin to the right, keeping an eye on me. No need to insult the dead. Footprints. More survivors? The goblin's nostrils flared nervously. All of his bluster had vanished. I couldn't move, couldn't think. Thinking was mercifully done for me. He snarled a warning, flattening his ears and lowering his body, ready to pounce. The dog observed me. Wary, but calm. The bear grunted her understanding and trudged over to the side. This was all too tiring. The well stood as it had for ages. The tadpole squirmed in my mind. It seemed sated. Her gaze followed it. Clearly she thought I was trespassing on her territory. Glad that's over. And if the darkest one was Shah, Moonrise must be her celestial sister, Saloon. Excellent! Now to forge the bloody thing. I felt the dog's aggression surge once again upon spotting me. There it was again. Anger! I could never defeat it. Only suppress it. Compassion! These are owlbear tracks. Its nest must be close. The tadpole jolted deep within my brain. This was it. A single word pervaded my consciousness. Soon. Despair poisoned her thoughts. She knew she was doomed whether she helped me or not. He grunted a pleasant greeting as I approached. That old woman was certainly memorable. <laughs> Only a fool would bow to the likes of this. A cluster of spiders scuttled inside the crevice. The voice was closer now. It was so clear. So peaceful. The squirrel bit my foot again. My hand touched the capsule. And something in my brain twisted. The dwarf's poem said there was a hidden door around here. A string snapped with a twang whipping across my face. My skull briefly ached. And I was her. I felt her irritation and indignity. He growled, warning me to keep my distance. The goblin's nostrils flared, as if trying to judge me through smell alone. I live by two rules. Always empty your flask and never trust goblins. I was perfectly happy. As I turned to leave, so did the other child nearby. She looked nervous for some reason. I probed the corpse for residual memories, but there were none. A sweet melody played above the waves. It vibrated with magic beckoning me. A charm, I realised. Answers eluded me. Growling, the squirrel bit my foot again. I didn't recognise the ritual or the name, Mother Peace. The spider scattered, but my hand came up empty. Had the bag been a trick of the light? They make good bait, drawing attention away from us. The wolf was calm. The battle had satisfied his urge to hunt. Deep grooves in the mud around that rock. The ox flicked its gaze away. It knew I carried a parasite and wanted none of it. I found the edges of a concealed entrance. The ox leaned forward eagerly snuffling the air around me. The spiders scattered and I stashed the bag. Something clinked among the coins. I saw gnolls and goblins prowling the woods. Too many predators lately, even for Halsin. I should have been whipped, made to bow before this creature in shame. Just empty shells. Best just to keep the unhatched one. The bird chirped, happy for the advice, and did as I asked. The bird took flight chirping loudly in protest and fear. The tadpole writhed. My mind suddenly reeled as if Bitten. I wonder who, or what, those chains are for. The bird hopped around his nest, keeping his eye on me. I wouldn't take his coin. Let's try a little trust, eh? People might just surprise you. Hells, something just woke up down here. Old, but not quite dead. Huh. The boar fled with a desperate squeal. At last, time to put this forge to work. Then she lunged at my foot and bit it. Looks like that's gonna bruise. Must be what the halfling mentioned. Not without his mother by its side. What now? History. The human's a bigot. He should have got the beating he deserved. It beckoned me with a nod of its head. Then it was off. The corpse's mouth jerked as the magic took hold. A dead tongue waiting to speak. Looking around her territory, extended from one end of the grove to another. Useless without Susabark. The child reached into the rocks behind him and opened a well-concealed hatch. My heart lightened as I finished the song. I hoped that the dead rested a little easier. The flame sputtered away. The sword was complete. The spell's power waned. I could ask no more questions. And I felt answers. She knew more about my condition. With one last rattling gasp, the body lay still. 
The magic was gone. There was another muffled cry. The two inside were still in the throes of... Passion. The old woman bustled about, muttering to herself. But then the feeling slipped. The creature's mind seemed to focus elsewhere. It was possessing my mind, forcing me to love it. At the mention of Halson's name, she flapped excitedly. The monster lay exhausted, defeated. Its eyes, wet black pearls, radiated only malice. West, Boulder's Gate. East, El Torel. Cake. Death is too kind of fate. The squirrel let out a terrified squeak and bolted. The squirrel flicked her tail at me and turned away. Well, that was... interesting. The boar huffed and bellowed, beady eyes full of distrust. True. You wouldn't have the grit. I saw her cradling a small child as he wept her eyes hard and hot, her knuckles bloodless. The dog continued to mourn at his master's side. I felt intense effort, his clumsy jaw straining to form a question the man could understand. I scooped up his gold pouch while the halfling stumbled deeper into the water, oblivious. It's broken, but not too badly. A bag lay within the crevice. At its mouth, a gold coin glinted. I hope we did the right thing. Trusting a creature like that. She was, though. I could see it in her eyes, deep down. Necklace has a harper's sigil. Why were they here? Is that Volo? The dog bowed his head with a soft whine. A flood of images washed over me. Not much use anymore. It's as if they chose to die here. The goblin stared at me, twitching. He seemed unsure whether to bow or attack. Looking at the broken helmet, I recognised the mark of Shah. This army marched in her name. She flexed her great shoulders and lunged, but didn't smell like master. The fog lifted and a growl bubbled from her throat. The crab writhed in horror as I ripped its shell away. Its raw, twisted abdomen squirmed. The bear was exhausted, but relieved. She greeted me with a contented rumble. It prodded the other items in my bag, as if considering their potential as new homes. With dull insistence, it tried to scuttle away. I was huge, a predator. I realized the crab needed water, fast. It would die without it. A gemstone glittering in the dark. <sighs> Brightness of deep thought and far seeing. <sighs> Brightness to blind. The bear blinked at me in surprise. With a small huff, she settled back onto her haunches. The crab landed next to a pouch of hamster feed. It immediately recoiled. She gave a great yawn and settled back down to sleep. Gods, that thing is massive. No, love. It's a port city. Some way off. I find I don't much like being told what to do. Least of all by long-dead monks. Strange face. <sighs> but same heart. <sighs> Pumping blood and strength and fury. The bear gave a long, inquiring sniff before settling back onto her haunches. Long ago. Maybe. The growl deepened into one reserved for another predator. And she lunged. Funny thing, prophecy. All grand destiny, but no advice on how to actually achieve it. The fear gave way to relief. The peace pool. A cure. Even the beasts did not bite there. Scuttle. Never resting. <sighs> Never trusting. <sighs> Tired feet and eyes always watching. The crab froze in terror as I approached it again. I don't know, but it could be a useful pole star. I realized the crab needed water, fast. It would die without it. Flame walking and God killing. A story for the ages, I reckon. And it's about us. The crab wriggled miserably as it hit the bottom of my bag with a wet thunk. It's trying to escape. The crab snapped its claws at me in defiant outrage. A prophecy about people falling from the sky. Could it really be about us? I suppose it can't be worse than here. The hermit crab had stayed deep in its shell since we left the swamp. It's a city, dolt. I need to get there. My kin's dragons should be savouring this kill. So Alondo knew all of this would happen. Let's hope he saw a happy ending then. Are we really going to let these goblins walk all over us? Get it! Not this time! My intrusion jolted the bear from sleep. No consideration this time. No warnings. She roared. Please. My destiny will not be dictated to me by some soothsayer. Her eyes narrowed. She'd been expecting someone else. Someone familiar. 
Unless this Alundo also wrote a primer on alien tadpole removal, I say we keep moving. Well, if everything's pre-written, nothing can go wrong then. Right? The growl petered out into a whine at the mention of the name. The bear blinked at me in surprise before she reared back and roared. That looks sturdy. These webs are everywhere. The crab shrunk into its shell, claws giving a lethargic click. The crab stayed hidden in its shell, using a claw to block the opening. Long as they're not here, I'm happy. As if deep in the earth, in the cold of winter, she slept. I'm not usually one to judge, but yuck. A flood of stony potatoes tinged with hate tumbled through his mind. Oh, the smell. How old is that butter? She could smell them. Goblins, wargs, and something else. She would defend her home, whatever the cost. She sniffed at me again. One wild thing considering another. Then, recognition? The growl took on a note of confusion, frustration and the bear lunged. The bear hovered between sleep and waking. Her nostrils flared, and her eyes flicked open. She sniffed at me again, one wild thing considering another. She remained still for a long moment, measuring the threat I posed, and dismissing it. It buried deeper with delight. The crab's claw scratched something hard, which it flung into the air. I've heard such predictions before. I've never been the subject of them. A dirty ring landed at my feet. And yet... Beneath that building rage, I felt guilt. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. <sighs> to it, I wasn't a halfling, <sighs> but rather sunshine. <sighs> Summer without ending. <sighs> and with it, the sadness. The crab sat in a damp spot that darkened the corner of my bag. The growl deepened, then burst forth in a roar. Challenge the gods for their domain. I'd settle for getting my own brain back. My kin's dragons should be savouring this kill. It's a city, chief. The jewel of the coast. And as close to a home as I've got. Moss. <sighs> Damp. Deep places and the cities that shined there. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. <sighs> Not give Yankee to it. But rather, I felt only an echo from a sleeping mind, of a threat considered, and already dismissed. They only hunt those worth hunting. Flame-walking and god-killing. A story for the ages, I reckon. And it's about us. I perceived myself as it did. A cloud of shifting sense, both strange and familiar. These things are still in our heads. Are we bringing monsters home with us? It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. <sighs> Not a tiefling to it, but rather... More of those things! The crab stayed tense as it cowered in my shadow. This story is no prophecy. It is superstition. A lie devised to mask ignorance. The crab rested in a trench of mud. It looked half asleep. Were you so ignorant of your lessons? It's a city the most vulgar along the coast. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. <sighs> Not an elf to it, <sighs> but rather... I always knew I was destined for something great. <laughs> I'll leave the details to Alondo. The crab sat in a dark corner of my bag, still damp from the beach. They're trying to escape! The crab plunged into the darkness and hit the bottom of my bag with a wet thunk. The bear looked back in the direction of the goblin camp and growled. He licked his wounds dejectedly. You would submit to these vermin. Can't you? It acknowledged me with a light snap of claws, like a fond greeting. As if you didn't have enough parasites already. She gave a great yawn and settled back down to sleep. More importantly, where'd it go? The bear let the water wash over him. He hummed his thanks. He owed me his life. No, it's a port city. One of the biggest on the Sword Coast. Huh. I think the crab stopped moving. The crab shrunk into its shell, claws giving a lethargic twitch. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. <sighs> Not a gnome to it, <sighs> but rather he was too weak still, 
but he couldn't truly rest until his master came home. They're trying to escape again! My pack went still. I wonder what the crab's up to. The crab was curled in its shell, clinging tightly to its home. I threw the crab in the bottom of my bag. It attempted to swim, mystified by the lack of water. Sweat and deep fire. <sighs> Singing stone and shapes waiting within. Boulder's Gate. Sounds like a useful waypoint. With a last warning flash of teeth, she settled back down. Where do you think those dragons went? The warning lowered into an admonishment reserved for foolish cubs. Webs all the way down. The fog lifted, and a low growl bubbled from the back of her throat. The bear extended her snout to sniff at me, then lunged. Well, that was pathetic. Click. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. <sighs> Not a dwarf to it, <sighs> but rather... The crab was on guard the moment I approached. We'll do a lot more than that. You can get anything in the city. She flinched, eyes widening in alarm. She licked her chops, tongue running over old scars. Mellow brown eyes regarded me lazily before the beast returned her gaze to her master. The squirrel chittered scornfully as my foot whistled over her head. What the hell's? Get back! Thick stone and heavy dark. <sighs> Fire. Deep and wide and cold. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. <sighs> Not a dual guard to it. <sighs> but rather, maybe there's a healer there. Gone. Why would they chase a runt like you? As the crab buried into the mud, it flung something metallic out of the earth. And with a quiet, resigned huff, she settled back down. There was nothing else to do here. I took my leave. The crab hit the bottom of the bag and immediately retreated into its shell. Oh, that smell. Is that... milk? Wherever they are, it was a fine hunt. The bear snorted and clacked her teeth in agitation, bearing fangs as long as my finger. How'd it do that? It's a city. And the sooner we reach it, the better. It's the most important city in this part of Faerun. And it's home. I watched her blink, process this, and pour the ground in agitation. Baldur's Gate? Is that a portal of some sort? I looked closely at the hermit crab. The crab feared me. I had the power to steal it from the beach. Stout heart and hearth fire. <sighs> Long roads leading back home. Challenge the gods. Why not? It wouldn't be the strangest thing that's happened today. Watch your step. These webs are everywhere. Prophets? Just second-rate poets with delusions of grandeur. The crab relaxed as I stepped back. I'm trying not to think about it. It's trying to escape again! It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. <sighs> not a drow to it, <sighs> but rather the bear radiated Palpable calm. Not just calm. Pure serenity. Baldur's Gate. We're nearer home than I thought. It seems this Baldur's Gate is close. Perhaps we should refresh our supplies there. The crab sat serenely in its new muddy home. I saw her brother as a child crying over a dead bird. The slingshot in Arca's hand, I felt her guilt. And suddenly, the great bear seemed lost. Lonely. Silently, she settled back down to watch me. The crab tasted cold and briny, squirming even after I bit down. It didn't stop moving until I swallowed. The crab visibly recoiled from the warm mammalian smell inside the pack. Perhaps they returned to the astral plane. The crab reveled in its new home of mud, claws clicking with joy. I swallowed the cold, briny meat whole. Whether the crab died from my mouth or simple shock was unclear. Wherever this is, at least it's free of dragons. A dirty ring landed at my feet as the crab carved out a place to rest. After them! 